This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. Navigating the journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices in life. This week, Hawaii begins the 76th commemoration of the bombing of Pearl Harbor, the day that changed the entire world. Today, we will visit with my new best friend, who was just a child when Pearl Harbor was born. So, if you're ready to join us, we ask you, navigate the journey. So, let's begin with Hirako. Hanako, I'll get it right. Oh, <laughs> tell us, tell us all about you. How old were you the day of the bombing? I was uh, 10 years old. I was in the fifth grade at Haleiwa Elementary School. And so you lived in Haleiwa at the time of the bombing? Yes. Yes. How did you find out about the bombing? Could you see? You couldn't see Pearl Harbor from up there. No. Um, Did you see the planes fly over or anything? Well, I noticed that some planes were flying overhead. Then later on, we listened to the radio and we heard that Pearl Harbor was bombed. Did they tell you what happened, who it was? What, how did you know? Uh, the, the Japanese pilots bombed Pearl Harbor. Oh, this, that's what mm -hmm. the radio said, mm -hmm. that the Japanese had bombed Pearl Harbor. So how did you feel, being Japanese, how did you feel about that? Or, did, or were you old enough to understand? Well, uh, I, I understood, but my parents came from Japan, and I'm a Nisei. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we just had to uh, do, do what we can to help with the war. So now, your parents came from Japan, so did they speak Japanese or did they speak English? They spoke uh, some pidgin uh, English and some Japanese. Mm -hmm. So did you, live, did you live on a farm? Uh, my parents had a truck farm, and they, they rented a place, uh, lease, lease a place, uh, someplace in the Waimea area. Mm -hmm. And so you lived in Waimea? No, Haleiwa. Haleiwa. Hale 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 on, on a vegetable farm. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then we had, in front of our house, uh, we had a small plot where there is vegetables. Mm -hmm. So how many siblings do you have? I come from a family of nine with uh, three boys and six girls. Wow. And I'm the last one. I'm the ninth, ninth family. Ninth one. Great. Right Great. now, uh, we have three surviving. My sister, I'm 86. Mm -hmm. My sister is 94. And my brother uh, is 96. So just three of us just are three. alive. Yeah. Were they all there at the time of the bombing, all of your siblings? No. Um, some of them were working, and I think uh, a few of my sisters were going to school. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were working at uh, Holly Homes and going to school from there. So when um, the, the day of the bombing, you were actually, that was a Sunday, so uh, what was your Sunday like once you heard on the radio what had happened? Well, um, we just had to do what we were told to do. Uh, we were told not to uh, leave be home at 8 o'clock, not, not to go out at night. And we had to darken our windows, apply uh, black paper, 
so mm -hmm. that uh, the, the lights cannot be seen from the house. And we were not allowed to go to the beach. Well, now, when, when you, your parents are from Japan, did they have uh, any artifacts, uh, pictures or anything from Japan? I think my, my parents had a picture of Hirohiro and they had a, like a Buddhist um, altar there. So they, they, they uh, took away the picture. Oh, they had yeah. to take away the picture. Your mother had to mm -hmm. take away the picture. Mm -hmm. And the Buddhist altar? Uh, the altar was there, but... Would you cover it, or...? No, it was okay. It was okay? It was just having to move the pictures. Mm -hmm. Did anybody, any Americans, come to your home and look at, see what was going on at your house? Any of the American, the military, or the police because martial law. So did any of them come out that far at the uh, Haleiwa? We, we lived in a, a place called Achu Lane in a uh, isolated area. And there was a back of a house. There, there was about 100 feet away, a little hill. And there were about five or six uh, military soldiers guarding that area. And then uh, when they needed water, they came to ask us for water, you know, from the outside faucet. And first they asked me if, if the water was poisoned. So I said, <laughs> why don't you drink it and tell me <laughs> whether you get sick or not. <laughs> well, did they drink it? Yeah, they, they, they drank it and yeah. found that it wasn't, it no. wasn't poisoned. <laughs> So what were they guarding behind you? I don't know. Might be it's um, an area where they could um, watch the area, uh, in the surrounding area. So, so that was there a large Japanese? Uh, uh, there, there were some hasu patches and uh, rice, rice fields or whatever. I meant local yeah, Japanese, local. yeah. So they were watching to see if you were spies. Or yeah. <laughs> I guess they were scared of everything, huh? Mm -hmm. So tell me now, when you went to school, after you, you know, once you went back to school, what was it like at school? We had to carry gas mask with us every day until about four or five months later that we, we had to uh, turn in the gas, gas mask. We also but had- But you're a little girl with a bas- 10, 10 years ten old. 10 old with this gas mask. But did you have to carry it? You didn't no. wear it. Well, we had to practice and we had, the school had a big air raid shelter. So we, we had to practice going in there and coming out from there. So how far was the school from your farm? Oh, it was about three quarters, oh, about three foot of the mile, I guess. And so I used to go through, um, I used to catch the bus, but I used to go to the back, back area where there's some uh, asu patches and taro patches. And uh, sometimes I would, I would go to the cane field and go up on the railroad track. And one time, uh, a Pat Hawaiian boy was harassing me, telling me, you bump her up. <laughs> and I said, how can I when I was? And, and, and then he kept on doing that so often. So I finally uh, reported that to the vice principal. Mm -hmm. And she uh, talked to him, and it stopped. So he said, you bomb Pearl yeah. Harbor, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so did you get a lot of harassment about... No. Uh, uh, from other people about 
you know, for the years that went on after the war? I mean, after the bombing. I think uh, there was some people that weren't too friendly, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I, I used to go to Japanese school, and when uh, <clears throat> they took away um, the Japanese, the Buddhist priests, and those Japanese school teachers, so the Japanese school was canceled. And even those businessmen, you know, there was a, a, a tailor. Mm -hmm. he, he was uh, in, interned, and, and there was also this, um, this journalist, news, newspaper person. He was also gone. And then my, my uh, girlfriend, uh, they, had, they had a restaurant, so her father was uh, interned too. Were they interned at uh, Hanu Uli Uli or on the mainland? I, I don't know whether they were sent to the mainland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that left you with no school. Yeah. So well, when you go to Japanese school, was that after the public school or yeah. during well, the day? When did you go to Japanese school? After the English school. After the English school. In the Every afternoon. Day. In the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So that you learn the culture and the language, or mm -hmm. is that what? Yeah, learning the Japanese, how to read and write Japanese. Japanese. But, but after, the, after the school was closed, I kind of forgot <laughs> so many years ago. Yeah. But did you learn about the culture, about the history and all of, of Japan and coming to Hawaii? Uh, not really. Uh, did your parents tell you why they came to Hawaii? My, my parents? Yes. Did they tell you why they came to Hawaii? Uh, I think my my parents had a better life uh, in Hawaii. In Hawaii, and my um, I think my my mother was a picture bride. Oh, yeah. Where where's where's where was your father from? Oh, Hiroshima. And your mother? Where did she come from? She, in fact, my parents were cousins. Oh, <laughs> so she was from Hiroshima also. Yes. Yes. And so he sent her a picture, I mean, a, a letter, and she sent him the picture. But how did that work? I, I don't know. Um, I think between relatives, you know. Oh, okay. So he picked her out and sent her here <laughs> to, to Hawaii. Yeah. So anyway, we need to take a break. And we will be back in just one minute. This is ThinkTech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Aloha, I'm Prince Dyke, the volunteer host of the Prince of Investing. ThinkTech is important to me because it brings Hawaii's number one financial literacy show around the globe. For the first time, ThinkTech Hawaii is participating in an online-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks to ThinkTech. We'll run only during the month of November, and you can help. Please donate what you can so that ThinkTech Hawaii can continue to raise public awareness to promote civic engagement through free programming like mine. I've already made my donation and look forward to yours. Please send your tax-deductible contribution by going to the website thinksforthinktech.carvox.com. On behalf of the community enriched by Think Tech Hawaii, 30 plus weekly shows, thank you, mahalo for your generosity. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search diveheart.org. We are back, and we are talking about 
World War II and the bombing December 7. Now this week here in Hawaii, we have a week-long celebration or commemorations better of the 76 years since the bombing of Pearl Harbor, the, the day that the whole world changed. Everything changed. Nothing has been the same. And what I remember, and you have to tell me this, I remember that everything was rationed. Mm -hmm. How about you? Do you remember about things being rationed? I, I just remember that gasoline was rationed. Mm -hmm. So it was hard to get from place to place. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, <clears throat> while we were at school, we had victory gardens. Mm -hmm. Uh, we raised lettuce and string beans, and uh, during the sixth grade year, we harvested string beans and Irish potatoes just to help with the war effort. Oh, what did you do? Do you, you sell them? Send what? I, I don't know <clears throat> whether we supplied <clears throat> the military. Oh, you supplied the military. I, I don't know what, what happened to all the. <laughs> the harvested crops. The harvested crops. You supplied the military, huh? And we, um, we also <clears throat> had projects like uh, we needed yarn, uh, yarn uh, beanies mm -hmm. for the military soldiers, and we, we also had um, knitted with the string uh, about eight by eight inch uh, dishcloth. Oh, so you made those mm -hmm. in school? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. And that was for the military? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you crocheted? How do you make? Uh, I think we, we knitted. Knitted. Oh, eight by eight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you have to collect uh, stamps? I collected stamps. Yeah, stamps. stamps. <laughs> yeah, we bought stamps. For the oh, war yes. effort, yes. Oh yes, we we collected stamps and we had saving saving bonds. Saving and, bonds, yes. And um, I, my husband and I, I think we. After a while, when we cashed out the bonds, I didn't realize that we had so many bonds. Yeah. Once I became an adult, I was amazed at how <laughs> many bonds I had <laughs> and stamps. Yes, like I I didn't know we we kept collecting, yeah. but it never occurred to me to cash in. So it was 1962 that I finally cashed. How, how old were you, with it? Were you when the war started? Uh, one, two, three. Three. You were two years old? Mm -hmm. I, I was ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was three. And so everybody was in that war, unlike wars today. Everybody, children, adults, didn't matter where you lived, you were in the war, you were part of the war. And so we had a clean plate club. Oh, yeah? You had to eat everything on your plate because there were children in Europe starving. And I never could figure out how my eating everything on the plate is helping children. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> and the victory garden, yes, we had a victory garden. So everybody, oh. so we're miles apart, and everybody's doing the same thing. So it was, I mean, they really worked at having everybody participate in this war. Yes. So the war went on, of course, four years. And with martial law, how did that affect you in Haleiwa? Or could you tell the difference out there, as opposed to being in the city? Well, <clears throat> 8 o'clock there was a curfew. Mm -hmm. And this blackout, we had to, to dock in our windows by putting a black, black cloth or black paper. and. Uh, we were not allowed to go to the beach. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me, now the, the first day of the bombing, we understand, did 
did any, did you think that the Japanese were going to come back or occupy the island? Did you ever have a sense, did anybody ever tell you that? Any rumors that, oh, they're going to come back and get us? Did you ever have anything like that? Mm -hmm. I know on the mainland people were buzzing, oh, they're going to occupy, or they're going to occupy. I just oh. I wonder if you had that happen. But, you know, on the mainland, I, I thought the, the people who live on the West Coast, mm -hmm. they, they were uh, interned in areas far away from the, the sea coast. Right. But I thought it was unfair that they had lost their property and business, yeah? Oh, yes. Yeah, lots of, lost everything. Mm -hmm. Never did get it back. Well, even here. Here, Lua Lua Lay was all Japanese farms, mm -hmm. and they took all of that. And the bank here, the Japanese bank, they confiscated oh. all of the money. Mm. Oh, no, this, <laughs> everybody <laughs> was affected. Everybody was affected. I, it's, it's amazing now how we look back at that time. And all of the, this, I, Saturday, this coming Saturday, at the um, Air Museum. They are celebrating people like you that were children at that time. <laughs> that is Children's Day, and they're celebrating. So it would be nice of you to meet all the others that were children and survived on that day. We have a church project. We, we have, uh, we devote two Saturdays in December to make, to bake, Cornflake cookies. Cornbread cookies. Uh, corn cornflake. Oh, cornflake cookies. Cornflake cookies. So uh, I, I'm scheduled to help with the oh, cookie you can't, baking. Uh, can't go and be honored as being one of the children that survived that, <laughs> that time. It's, I am just so delighted to meet you. So to have you drive all the way from Haleiwa to be with us this morning? That is just wonderful. You will come back and visit with us again? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. It's been a real pleasure. And aloha. It's been a pleasure being with you. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>